hooked up. That's brew. Exactly. D, by the way, for that one. Not this one. No, <laughs> this one, the duck rabbit, yes. Okay, next up is the Trogoneta, which John picked up in, in at the brewery, so he's going to do the review on this one. Oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> uh, very good beer. Uh, here's my notes. Oh, here's your notes, eh? Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's a Doppelbach uh, from Trogues again, you know, on my way back from the old softball tournament there. Uh, definitely a dark caramel brown, uh, half finger uh, head on this, off white to that. Uh, did quickly dissipate though, so it wasn't, it didn't hang around, the lacing didn't hang around a while. Um, the, Smell was nice caramel malty, a little bit of alcohol though. Uh, I think this was the one I smelled. The, the was this the one the bread? I think yeah, I bread got, yeast. Yeah, yeasty. Um, but uh, there's some light hops uh, taste-wise. Light hops, a little bit of booziness to it. Uh, malt caramel, kind of similar to the smell. Nothing really different. Uh, very good double box. Not the best, but you know, it, it would be if it was at a restaurant, I, I could probably go for it again. Uh -huh. uh, if it was something I was in the mood for, uh, basically gave it a B to a B plus. Uh, I, I do have to say, it, it was a, you know, it, it definitely ramped us up from the duck rabbit. And as I said, we we're drinking in the order that we're laying it out here. Mm -hmm. So. And that's at 8.1%, so I think if maybe you put a little age on it, it might even get better with tame down the, the alcohol forward nature of it. But the problem we've got with drinking this beer is we drank the Anger, you know, Celebrator or Doppelbach, Doppelbach, we had too many beers. Anyways, the Anger is just a superior beer. It's got malty complexity, as we explained before, and but this is a good beer. It's a solid Doppelbach. So we moved on from there. We did a little bit of American Triple Love. We drove up uh, I-95 to the uh, cross through the tolls of Delaware and into New Jersey and hit exit four with the Flying Fish Brewing Company and their American Triple bottle condition now. Mm -hmm. So we got the hit of yeast down in the bottom on this one. This is American Triple. When you get it, if you guys have had Belgian triples, um, this is a different thing. These American Triples, at least this one anyway is a lot more hop forward. The Belgian triples, you got a lot more sweetness and more pineapple of that kind of characteristic. One night when we had an epic beer night that we didn't film, we drank a whole big old box of St. Bernardus, and that triple is really just a prototype of a Belgian triple. This American triple is kind of like a BPA sort of meets that triple ale at the same time, so you get that hoppy finish, but you still have the candy, sugar, and everything in there. And so it's a weird looking beer too. It yeah. it's looks like a, uh, as we said, New Jersey uh, like dish dishwasher water. water or something. Yeah. I, I, when I opened the bottle, and I smelled New Jersey. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, you know, uh, but yeah, it was. It, it definitely was a uh, well worth the buy. Uh, I would. Mm -hmm. I definitely go buy that again. Um, again, a little different than the Belgian triples, but you know, I, I definitely. It, it was hard to describe because after having the, the Belgian and going to this style, it, it just, it was hard to really find the words, but it, not, not a bad beer, definitely. To me, the thing that would bring me back is like the spiciness that's in it. And if you gave that a little age, I mean, this yeah. is a this is a 10.2% beer, so you can sell her this one. I think it would tame that bitterness a little bit and it would be a totally different beer after a year. But Give it a try, guys. I mean, we gave it an A minus on that, and the bitterness. I say it's bitter, but it's only 23.8 IBU. But it's kind of got like a bitterness and a tartness going on that you wouldn't expect in a normal triple. But it's an American triple, yeah. so hit it. A New Jersey it. triple. New Jersey, yeah. <laughs> and it's all on exit four, and you can go it. Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Yeah. Right out of Pennsylvania. Exactly. Last one. Well, not really last, because we've got that secret beer, right? <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, again, as we started off, the Maori, Maui, Maori, Maui Brewing Company. Uh, Aloha. Aloha. Coconut Porter. Now we've done this, uh, we've had this before. Uh, buddy DJ has been, uh, has actually reviewed this before. Mm -hmm. um, 
I remember the whole giving up coffee for Lent thing. I had to get a bit. Yeah, it, it was it was very good. You open it up and, it, you know, it smells like I just poured a cup of coffee in the morning and it was really nice, malty, uh, not malty, uh, chocolatey coffee, uh, toasted coconut smell right, right off the bat. Uh, same with the, uh, you know, drinking it. It had a nice head to it. I think what we had one and a half, two finger. Yeah, we had a finger and a half. half yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, drinking it smooth, very smooth, very nice. Um, definitely, I bought a four pack of this at my local Wegmans today and uh, definitely would go for that again. Yeah, as, as porters go to, because they've got that coconut in it, it's kind of like that thing that makes it a little bit unique. I got a soft spot in the old heart for Maui since I used to live there. You know, I didn't live on Maui, I lived on Oahu, but I went to Maui probably 10, 15 times, and it's an awesome place. I mean, any place where you can't build a building taller than a coconut tree grows, it's got to be pretty damn good. And if you ever go to Hawaii, guys, go to Maui. I mean, Oahu's cool and all that kind of stuff, but if you get a chance, if you ask me, since I lived there for about a half a year or so, go to Kauai, Maui, and the Big Island, and you can't go wrong. I mean, those places are just real, pure Hawaii. And this beer... It's got a lot of that character in it. That's why we're gonna, I, I'd say we give it an A. A, yeah. Because, you know, really, uh, we've had a lot of other porters, gallons of other porters, <sighs> poor livers. Anyway, but gallons of other porters, but this one, it's, it's got that little unique thing going on. So, without further ado, we've got, we got two pint glasses here. We're pulling out the bottles, and yes, that's right, guys. I am the guy that followed the distributor truck around the parking lot <laughs> just to get the KBS. Exactly. My buddy John here, they don't have founders in Maryland. Johnny Boy laid it out the line and got to the Total Wine and hooked up with a four pack of the founders Kentucky Breakfast Stout. And even got my wife to get follow me with me and we got two four packs of this. That's dedication to the craft beer. <laughs> John gets an A for effort tonight. So, you know what, John? You gotta crack this one open, man. You, you know, you, the you, thing is, is I partaked in one right the other night, so I'll let you do the. You're gonna let me do the honors? Thing. Damn, I'm I'm feeling pretty pretty special. Let's see. Single crack, too, guys. All right, we're gonna pour yours first, though. Oh damn. Let's, no. Let's see what we got here. We'll get, there is we'll a get wow a factor in this one. Look, man, I got aggressive on that pour. I'm not getting too much head, Chris. Now this is 11 and quarter percent beer, okay? So this is no joke. Look at that. There we go. I've seen a lot of other folks pouring this, and they didn't get that much head on it. And I didn't get that much on this one. Let's see. We're gonna get all this out of here because this is a rare beer. You guys see this going on eBay for for big bucks. I mean. 11.2% percent alcohol by volume and 70% IBU, but from what I know, you can't feel the IBU and I haven't tasted yet, like Mr. John, because he got it before me. But anyways, hooked up. Let's see what we got on the room mm, on this. Nice, nice. Wow, look at that head retention, guys. This is a high-end beer. If you look at this, the bubbles are tight as hell on this. No light is getting through this no. beer, none. Already got alcohol lacing on here, alcohol legs up on the side of the glass, and those those bubbles aren't going anywhere. This is making Guinness look like a punk. That's I was just about to say. Yeah, I could see through Guinness, but I can't yeah. see through this. I mean, this is freaking used and abused motor oil. I mean, Guinness, sorry guys, it ain't this. Let's see what we got on those. Damn. Bourbon. Bourbon. Oakiness. Smoky flavor. Or smell. <sighs> Chocolate nibs. Mm hmm mm. Definitely. Even like a little coconut and vanilla going on. This, there's a lot going on in this beer, man. I mean, I can see why people freak out and, and knock, pe knock the grandma over to get this one. Almost. <laughs> exactly. Let's have a taste of this, dude. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, by the way, guys, please, please, drink on us. Wow. Dude, you weren't kidding. It's got to be one of the best beers. He, he sent me some texts, and I thought he was giving me some shine, guys. I mean, he's like, man, you can taste the oak barrel. Wow, this is awesome. Dude, I am not going to doubt you anymore. This is this is the bomb. I mean, we've, we've both of us have been to, t 
tequila Mexico to different distilleries and we've had you know I've had tequila from uh, Jack Daniels whiskey barrels mm -hmm. um, you know but this this coming out whatever bourbon barrel they had it, it definitely uh, yeah you taste it, it it's the flavor of everything that's in that bourbon and in the oak uh, you know that's it, it's all in there nice chocolate coffee you know just like the smell you, you pick that up going down it's smooth uh, doesn't linger long but you know just that nice so much so nice yeah, much better in it's, it's almost like eating a sugar daddy almost it's like that sweet toffee caramel and everything is yeah. such in balance i mean look we're geeking out guys to the max as you can hear but there's a reason if you can get this beer get it and drink it i mean this is the bomb there this stuff sells for 20 30 dollars a bottle 60 70 80 dollars a four pack but there's a reason for this. I mean, say the 70 IBUs, but you don't taste any bitterness except for like coffee bitterness. I mean, this is like a freaking micro ground Starbucks coffee yeah. meets beer and alcohol. This is just the bomb. I think you know, you know, since we mm. do have quite a number of it left, I think we'll age this for a while and oh yeah, try this in you know maybe another nine months or something to see what. Nine months to a year. I mean, there's a little, you can taste a little bit of the alcohol, which I'm not opposed to. No. Don't get me wrong. No. But I think after a year, this is just going to be a, a monster. I mean, we had Rasputin the other day, but this one ups Rasputin. I mean, now that said, I did hear in Fairfax, you know, at the uh -huh. Whole Foods, there's Rasputin barrel age. So maybe next time we'll have that one for the surprise beer, but that's a big bottle. Exactly. But doesn't mean we won't drink it, guys. So without further ado, you know, Man, remember, most importantly, support your local brewers, guys. You know, think locally, drink locally, and we'll see you next time. Let them know what you think about their beer. Yes. So maybe they'll make it better like <clears throat> Star Hill. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.